There's really not enough you can say about him. Yeah, and if uh, Scottie Pippen had been healthy, things may have been different down the stretch, but really with... I'm sorry, we have to go back, Ray. We'll be back with you. Uh, right now we're heading back to uh, Salt Lake City to Michael Jordan, who is talking. Okay. You don't want to miss L and MJ. I think it's, it's, it's bittersweet in the sense that it was the toughest route, the toughest challenge that we've had in the, in the six championships that we have won. Um, in some, some people's eyes, uh, no one expected us to fulfill this, and uh, that was part of the challenge. You know, and then five before that, everybody predicted us in some respects, and uh, it was a hands-down situation. Here, it wasn't, you know, and we had to do it against a team that, you know, played well all season long, played at home, had a crowd that was really energetic and kept them motivated, and um, you know, we lost our opportunities to win it at home, and we came here. I mean, at first, you know, as soon as the games ended in uh, in Chicago. It was some dim feelings and some negative thoughts, you know, and, and as time went past, I think everybody realized that, it, you know, if we want that sixth title, we have to go through Utah to get it, you know, and, and we have to go out there and win it out there. So, I mean, you know, I think those negative thoughts erased very quickly, as, you know, and uh, it's, 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 it's a great day for everybody, I think. Michael, few people in the world face retirement with so many others caring about the decision that he makes. You mean so much to so many people, to the league, to the other players, to the networks, even to the economy. How do you make how, how do you make the right decision for Michael Jordan, the human being, independent of all of the other people and forces that are tugging on him? You know, it's a gut feeling. You know, it's just a feeling that I have. You know, when I walked away the first time, it was a feeling. It wasn't some, something someone told me. When I came back, it was a feeling, you know. Uh, you know, if and, and, and when that time comes where I got to walk away, I hope that because I walked away, no one will look at me any less, you know, and sure, the economy may take a different turn, but I would advise you to invest wisely. <laughs> and, you know, my life has to continue. You know, I, I, hopefully I'll put enough memories out there for everybody to at least have some thoughts about what Michael Jordan did in his 13 years or 14 years or whatever it takes. Uh, and put some comparisons up there for kids to follow and, and compare themselves and reach, you know, and that's a part of the challenge. And, uh, you know, I have another life, and I know I have to get to it, you know, at some point in time, and uh, hopefully the, the fans and the people understand that. Michael, you said last week that this was the toughest year for Coach Jackson as a coach. What about you as a player? It was tough. You know, uh, it was tough in the sense that, I was more competitive than I ever was because I wanted to win more than I ever did, you know, because of some of the, the bumps in the road, you know, Scotty being out, you know, you know, Dennis you know, had to step up and every now and then we had to, you know, deal with Dennis and uh, deal with the different types of expectations, you know, uh, some of the, you know, the criticism about our team and, and the lifestyle that we live and, uh, you know, it's bearing them. It, it just takes its toll on an individual, you know, and Sure, we just have to keep looking at the the, the bigger picture, you know, which is the, tonight is the biggest picture we could think of. And sure, sometimes the pictures don't look so clearly, but if you keep moving in the right direction, it's going to clear itself up. And, and tonight is, is very, very clear. Michael, you just uh, won your sixth championship with uh, Scotty and Coach Jackson. Uh, as a man who live of ch ch as a player who live of challenges, how much is a challenge is it for you to win uh, one without him? <laughs> Pretty sure it's a major challenge, you know. And, and, but the question is, do I want to do that or not? You know, that's the things that has to be debated over the summer. My, Michael, how frustrating it is, or at least annoying, to have to talk that much about your future tonight. Say that again. How frustrating, or at least annoying, is it to have to talk that much about your future and the future of the team tonight? It's not. A, it's not annoying. I mean, most people have been waiting for that, and. and um, you know, my, my, my answer is, I mean, there's still a lot of unanswered questions. And uh, tonight, it's, it's, it's a lot of sympathetic feelings about, you know, this team and where, you know, where we want it to go. But as time, you know, takes, it, it gets involved, I mean, some of, the, some of the feelings may change. You never know. But I think that's the purpose of waiting time, waiting until the end of the summer or may, in the summer and making final decisions. Michael, the other night, you seem so intrigued by the thought of, uh, you know, dropping the last three and, and possibly walking away. The fact that you played such a great last minute and had a game-winning shot, uh, title-winning shot, is that kind of, you know, do you like the idea of going out that way? Yes, if that's if that's the case, yes. 
I, I mean, when I got that rebound, I mean, my thoughts are, are very positive, you know, and the crowd gets quiet. Uh, the moment starts to become the moment, you know, for me, you know, and that's what we've been, you know, we've been, that's part of that Zen Buddhism stuff, you know, the moment. You, once you get in the moment, you know when you're there. You just, things start to move slowly. You start to see the court very well. You start reading what the defenses are trying to do. And I saw that. I saw that moment. And, you know, when I saw the moment, the opportunity to take advantage of it, when Russell reached, and I took advantage of that moment. And uh, I never doubted myself. I never doubted the whole game. We were hanging too close. You know, it was a three-point game, four-point game, five-point game. You know, Scottie Pippen's hurt. Dennis and everybody's in foul trouble. And they never really burst out and left us standing, you know. And... You know, we kept hanging in there, and I knew that we were going to have an opportunity to win this game, and I just wanted to be able to do that. And uh, from an offensive standpoint, sure, you look at my rebounds, I'm probably, I only had maybe two or three rebounds. And I told Phil that, you know, I know I'm going to have to play a lot of minutes. I have to conserve energy somewhere. And unfortunately, I had to be on the rebounding edge. And, and, you know, but the offense, I had to step forward. Okay, Michael. last question for Michael. Michael, after John hit that three-pointer. You scored the last four points. You actually scored the last eight, but you scored the last four on baskets. Talk about those last two baskets, your layup and then the jumper. And did that jumper remind you of last year, game one, with Brian Gard and you? He reached. You went. It was in a very similar situation. Uh, <clears throat> the play before that was, uh, you know, with Carl Malone. We've been trying to double team him. And Hornacek was trying to, I guess, pick Carl Malone. And he never really cleared, and which gave me an opportunity to go back. And Carl never saw me coming, and I was able to knock the ball away. Um, you know, the play before that was when Phil called, you know, an isolation play for me, you know, to, to take it to the hole and make him foul me or, or get an easy basket, which is what I did. But you know, when I got the ball, I looked up and I saw 18.5 seconds left, you know, and I felt like we couldn't call a timeout because it gave defenses an opportunity to set up, you know, and it was a do or die situation. So I, I, I let the time tick to where I felt like I had the court right where I wanted to, and Stockton was on the right-hand side with Steve Kerr. I knew he couldn't gamble because Steve has killed him before. So, I mean, uh, and as soon as Russell reached, you know, he gave me a clear lane, which, you know, I made my initial drive, and, you know, he, he bit on it, and I stopped, pulled up, and I had an easy jump shot. Great look, and, you know, it went in. And once it went in, I knew from that point on, we, we've been hanging around long enough. This is a game-winning basket. Now it's just a matter of playing solid defense. And our defense has held us strong all series. And we would never be in this scenario without our defense. So all we had to do was play defense for 5.8 minutes, 5.8 seconds, and I, I knew we could do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's my Next dog up, we'll friend. have uh, Scotty <laughs> Pippen and Ron We have it, Michael Jordan, simply spectacular. And as you look at some of the final numbers, we can tell you this. Michael Jordan's numbers in this clinching game six remarkably similar to his numbers in last year's clinching game six against the Jazz. In both games, he played 44 minutes. In both games, he shot 15 for 35 from the floor. Both times, he had 80% of his free throws. Last year, he had 39 points, this time 45. And so, Michael Jordan, your MVP, the Chicago Bulls, their sixth title in eight years. And Pippen right. and, and Ron Harper, those two at the podium set to address the media. We take you there live on ESPN News. There was a tight shot of you embracing Jordan at the end of the game and crying. And this performance, and where do you think it's going to rank right up there with Michaels? I, th I think, you know, the Jazz gave me the easy shot that really uh, worked against me to start of the game. I got that dunk, and from that point on, I just started to feel spasms in my back as I run every time I put my right leg down. And I just tried to gut it out and was able to get six, seven minutes in the first half. And... I thought I told Phil to take me out the game. It was just very difficult for me. I tried to run in and back and do whatever I could. And I just decided at that point that I would just take as much treatment as I could and try to go out and do what I could the next 24 minutes, hoping that, you know, some type of presence out on the court could make a difference, open up some opportunities. And, you know, I just did my best. But I have to give credit to my teammates. They came out and really held it together in the first half. Michael, uh, really put the scoring load on his shoulders and, you know, just did what he could. And, you know, he had an outstanding performance. Uh, you know, it was a great team win, but you can't overlook what he's done for this team, especially in today's game. Scotty, for years, your courage had been questioned by people in Chicago and elsewhere. The, the migraine headaches, the 1.8 <laughs> seconds, 
Is it important to you that this performance changes people's minds about your courage and toughness? Not exactly. You know, I just wanted to get the series over with. I want the team to stay close and allow me the opportunity to come out and give my best 24 minutes, which didn't look that great, especially in my eye. But it was important for me to just try to be on the court and make my presence known and try to be effective any way possible. Um, I think I have great knowledge of the game and knowing what I could do and a lot of things that I could not do out there. But um, I don't reflect on those things. I just try to go out and play for my teammates and give the best performance that I can and try to come away to win. I didn't want to be looking at a game seven knowing that I'm not 100% and we're pretty much having our backs against the wall playing on their court. Scotty, last year Michael sat at the podium and talked about how important it was to bring everyone back for one more year. Even with what you said at different times during the season, wouldn't you like to do one more year and forget rebuilding, maybe sign a one-year deal? Is that a possibility? I'm not thinking about that right now. Give me a couple of days and I'll give you an answer. But right now I just want to enjoy this moment and you know get myself feeling good again physically. Uh, I have to just sit back and enjoy this moment and you know I'll just see what's what's going to happen. You know, it's, anything is possible. Next question. Scotty, you know Michael as well as anybody, certainly as a competitor and as he considers his future, at some point his physical skills will decline. We know that it has to happen. They haven't declined yet, so I can't agree with that. Do you think at some point he could accept playing without being the most dominant player in the sport? No. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, Michael has probably got another five years left on his career. I mean, even before we can even see a decline in it. I mean, because he has so much knowledge of the game. There's other things that, you know, he knows that is waiting in his game that, that he can always pull out. And right now we're seeing him probably at the top of his game because he used so much knowledge as well as the physical skills that he has when he's out on the court. Scotty, I know you don't want to talk about your future particularly, but but if this was the, the end of the, this particular Bulls group. Who's talking? Right here. If this is the end of the, this, this group, group of Bulls being together, how great a run was it in your opinion? Wonderful. Tremendously. I mean, it's unforgettable. I mean, it's something that I'll be able to look back and cherish for the rest of my life, you know, to be able to win six titles in the last eight years. Uh, it's, it's been a great run for us. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of celebrations, and you know, I can never see any other team in the future being as dominant as this ball club has been. And, you know, you hate to see it come to an end, and you don't want to see it come to an end. I mean, we feel like that we're dominant, uh, even though we weren't. 100% healthy, especially myself going in these last couple games. But um, it's been a lot of fun, and that's part of winning is being able to have the courage and desire to go out and do whatever you can to bring your team to the top. Okay, we are taking questions for both players. Yeah, don't shop for gifts. No, 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 no. Let him go ahead. Let him go ahead. Well, Ron Harper, Ron Harper. Michael Jordan, judging by the press conferences, was almost hilarious after the two games you lost. How much of a factor was it for, with his leadership helping you get him by those defeats? Well, well, you know, here, here, here's a guy that, that does, a, does a lot for our basketball team, and uh, without his sad part there, early during, during, during this ball game, he was the guy who was holding us there. And uh, he came in during halftime, and uh, he felt that we still had 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 this had this basketball game. And uh, and the main thing that he said was for us to for us to go out there and to get him some help. And uh, once his sidekick came back, it was it was just one game that uh, we hung in there, and we had a very 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 good chance of. And uh, it was a, a very great ball game, and uh, our hat goes out to uh, him, to uh, the, the guys on uh, the basketball team. It was a great, great win for our team. Well, you feel like with this um, series in particular, that you're finally getting the recognition you deserve? I don't, I don't care about that. You, you know, uh, the, when I first came in 
in uh, this league. Everybody said he can shoot the ball and do this last and do this slam dunk. Uh, all them things don't mean anything. Anything. This is my third championship, and uh, if I would have to change my game again, I would probably change it again. I think. <laughs> uh, Scotty, over here. Scotty. Yeah. Uh, what exactly was your injury, and how did it how did it happen? <laughs> took too many charges from Carl Malone. <laughs> you was out the club too long. I mean, I, I took a lot of hard falls, uh, you know, not just in this series, but this is something that's probably going back even far as the Indiana series, uh, you know, just getting thrown to the floor, and I, I had a very sore back and took a couple falls in the last game that really threw me off, and I just lost a lot of my mechanics for it's moving out on the court and being aggressive and coming over and attacking and you know, I felt like that was something that affected us in game five that I didn't have the energy the mobility to be aggressive from a defense standpoint and as well as offense I saw for a lot of jumpers um, 0 for 7 from the three-point line uh, 2 for 16 from the game um, those those things really worked against me and defensively uh, I wasn't the same player uh, you know, even looking back at a lot of the tape of that game, they were saying how Utah had countered and were able to take advantage of me being able to come over and double team. And it was pretty much only because I wasn't physically mobile enough to get up and move. But as a result, we, we were able to counter and we came away with a win. Uh, Ron, if this team isn't back intact. How do you see your role changing next season? How good do you think <laughs> you this team can be? <laughs> I, I, I actually don't know. Uh, who? I mean, you know, uh, I'm I'm not going to think about what if and what's going to happen to, to this basketball team. Uh, I'm going to just enjoy these next few days, next – Next, next, this, this offseason, I'm going to enjoy and I'm going to wait to see what happened to my best friend on this team and uh, hope whatever happened, happened for, for him because, you know, he, he been a, a, a great teammate and he was the one who called me to be here. And uh, if he want to be a Chicago Bull to be on this team again, it's up to him, to my man, Scotty. And if you don't want to be a bull, I'm going to be cheering for him anyway. Okay, last question. Okay, Ron, um, you had great defense on Stockton this game and throughout the series. Talk about the three-pointer that he made and the three-pointer that he didn't make. <laughs> well, well you, well, you understand, uh, he's the kind of guy who runs his team. Uh, he has the basketball all the time, man. Everything goes through his hands. And uh, last year, I I didn't have fun. This year, I, I, for, I for sure said that I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do the things that I know that I can do. I use my size on him, and uh, I just have fun out there. And uh, the shot that uh, the shot that he made was a, a very, very tough shot. And the last shot that he, the last shot that he didn't make, I was... Mm. Relieve, put it that way. See y'all. Okay, thanks, guys. You can take the trophy. You're watching live coverage of the post game press conferences. The Chicago Bulls, the world champions for the sixth time in eight years. This is ESPN News. We're back with more in just a moment. Thanks, thanks a lot. How does this uh, this one compare? Can you even compare it? It seemed like uh, for us, the fans, it was yeah. a lot more tense. It was it was very intense. It's just really nice to, to win it on the road. I hate to say that. I mean, it was uh, the last two championships have been great at home, but um, to beat a team on the road is something that uh, you know I haven't done before. So the experience has been great. Can you take us down the last waning minutes there, where Stockton hits the big three? What was going on? When he hit that three. Oh man, that was that was a big shot. I thought that was uh, gonna really come back to. Uh, honest but uh number 23 is on our team and he's <laughs> awfully good and you know he came down got the steal 
and went down there, hit, hit a shot. I was a little upset that he didn't wait till the buzzer to make that shot. Right. But, but uh, truly amazing uh, coming back from what we were down and winning that game. We were saying Jordan uh, still has room to improve. If he can hit that shot a little closer to the buzzer, yeah. he comes back next year. Yeah. That's incentive. Everyone's talking about the future of this team. What, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I have no idea. Uh, whatever happens, happens, and, and we'll, we'll go from there. But right now, I think everyone in Chicago should just celebrate this championship and enjoy the team and what just happened tonight. And in the future, we'll see what happens. It'll be a fun summer to see what happens, but let's enjoy the win and, uh, and have a big celebration. You deserve a good Thanks. celebration as well. Congratulations. Thanks, We're going to go out to uh, Dan Rohn, who's out uh, with Bill Wennington on the floor. Danny. Hey. All right, Bill. Thanks very much, Bill Wennington. It's about time, Bill. It's about time. He's I've only been standing here 10 minutes waiting for all you people, but, uh, well, you know, it's beautiful What thing. better do you have to do tonight? Well, I have, you know, I could drink this. My wife and Carmen Electra <laughs> in the locker room. I'm talking, you know. Relax now. Hey, 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 hey. We'll give you some championship latitude here, but you can't take it too far. So how do you feel? How does it feel? You're third and the Bulls sixth. Right now, I feel uh, elated. I mean, it was just outstanding. It was a great game. Um, very happy to have participated in it, but watching Michael down the stretch is just, that's what, I mean, you couldn't have written a better a better storybook ending for this game. No, you couldn't. And if it is the end of everything that's gone on in this decade, man, what a way to end it. Take your time. It was. <laughs> It really is a great way to end it, and you know it's been just a great year, and we've had so much fun this year. And uh, I mean, people—I I don't want to say people doubted us, but people were speculated if we were going to win it. In, uh, Indiana series, I think, really prepared us for this final series and and got us uh, raised our game to another level. And, and it really has just been a fantastic year. Well, it really has, and a long year too. The trip to Paris to start things off, and you know, on down the road, and it was kind of a rocky road at times with Scotty injured and a lot of contentiousness going on among the organization, <laughs> and yet you guys still come out on top. Yeah, that that uh, with the politics involved this year has really made it difficult. For for a lot of us players, you know, we like to say we brushed it aside and everything, but and we did, we did a great job of it. But it's been very difficult, and and it's tough because it's tough when people say this is going to be your last year together, and we this is such a close knit group that it, we've had so much fun. It, it's really hard to think about a year that it won't be this be like this anymore. Well, maybe it will, and maybe it won't. You know, Jerry. Well, we can start off. Oh, yeah. I needed that. <laughs> we, you know. <laughs> Uh, I think we've had enough of Bill Wennington for one season. Well, about, hey, Harry, Harry, I'm coming to get you back in Chicago. I'll be there later. John Stockton's at the podium. Let me clean up, will you? Thanks so much. And with Utah, we had a four-point lead. They came out and changed the game around the third quarter. And, and we just kept picking at them, picking at them until we got a chance, and they turned the ball over and gave us more opportunities, and we capitalized. Were you disappointed or upset that you couldn't close this out in Chicago. I mean, that, that was the perfect scenario. You're right off into the sunset in a victory parade, and you had to blow it and had to come out to Salt Lake City. Well, it's tough. It's tough to win in Chicago. Yeah, we would love to win in, you know, win it in Chicago, but some, for, for whatever reason on the road, you have a sense of uh, united feelings and you know, unity. And, uh, you know, I knew when we came on the road, we had a better chance of winning this game didn't win it in Chicago because you had a lot more distractions. They had to deal with the distractions. We had to focus on the game. Did it ever enter your mind that when you saw Scotty and Payne, we, we don't want to go to a game seven here in Salt Lake City? We, I, I thought about it for a quick second. And, that, and when Scotty was out and I didn't know if he was going to come back and play, you know, the competitor in me said, well, that means I got to take over a couple more jobs, you know, and I wasn't walking away from it. I looked at it as a challenge, but, you know, I looked at it in the sense that, you know, don't waste too much energy. Make sure you try to keep everybody involved so that they feel like they're part of the team. And if I have to count on them, if I have to pass it to Steve Kerr in the closing minutes, he can have some rhythm to make the shot. So it was a, it was a, you know, a, a, a real touchy line there not to try to take over too much of the game and keep everybody involved. I noticed your hand. You had that shooter's hand after you hit the jumper on Russell. We used to do that in high school. Well, <laughs> if you look at all my jump shots up until that point, everything was short. And I was, I was pulling on it. That time I made sure that I followed and I stuck with it a little bit longer and you know it made things happen. Could you possibly even entertain the thought of retiring without winning the final game of the season? I don't want to think that way. You know, I want to think that, you know, if whenever I choose to quit that you know, I'm leaving when we're winning and not when we're losing. You know, um, and But you couldn't walk off the floor uh, having lost your last game, could you? The competitor in you, could you? I could because I, I have so many successes to, to have memories over, you know, so uh, I'm not afraid of that, you know. Uh, I couldn't walk away from the game with people saying, well, he stayed a year too long. 
Did you feel old out there at any time? No. I felt good out there. When I'm out there, I feel good. And the adrenaline is pumping. I feel 25. I may look 35, <laughs> but I feel 25. Michael, it's been a pleasure to cover you. I get paid to do this, too. It's been a, been a joy to watch you. And if you got some adjectives to describe you, if you come back next year, give me a call. All right. Good luck on the baby. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go back to the studio. Michael Jordan, Dan Patrick, the best of friends. 87-86, the Bulls win their sixth title here in the 90s. Plenty more to come here on ESPN News from the NBA Finals. Stay right there. 36 years old? Yeah. Guys, if the, the, Bulls, the Bulls are back, it probably was. I was going to say, <laughs> will, will that team be back? They probably will be yeah. back. Uh, Jerry Sloan talked about that during the series. They'll be back, and, uh, you know, he they could be right. You never know. The longer the summer goes, the better the chance they are mm -hmm. coming all back. Somebody, okay. Uh, and, we're going to uh, go out to uh, Bill Weir, who is with another one of the Bulls players tonight. Bill? Dickie Simpkins. I am with uh, Dickie Simpkins, enjoying a nice fat Cohiba. Congratulations, Dickie, on another one. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And this uh, Cohiba is very excellent. This is my championship Cohiba. I'm going to get this frame. I'm going to smoke about halfway and get a frame. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, don't stomp it out or you know, throw it in a, throw it in a can. It now, this has been an amazing year for you. In and out and back in again. Uh, <laughs> describe it for us. Uh, yeah, it's definitely been a strange year. You know, I, I wanted to make a business change and go away. And my businessman here, my agent, Sean Holly, took me away. And thank Things didn't work out like we wanted it to, but you know we found a way to get back. God, God's will brought me back, and my agent brought me back, and things worked out now. So I feel great. Can you describe what was going on in the last uh, seconds of that game? Stockton hits the big shot, and oh, heads up for the champagne. Stockton hits uh, his big shot. Uh, what were the thoughts on the bench? Well, we knew, you know, we've been in we've been in situations all year where. Uh, People hit big shots, and we, we just stay calm and keep our game poised. And uh, as you can see, we've obviously always come back and made a shot to uh, win the game. As far as Michael goes, well, MJ's made the shot to win the game. MJ's got the game. Congratulations to you, man. Enjoy the Cohiba, and congratulations to the agent. We've got a champagne fight going on. Oh, somebody's going, to, somebody's going in the locker room. Dan, it looks like we've got a, a forced shower. Let's go back to uh, Stephen Allison while they <laughs> sort all this out. Looks like one of our colleagues is getting that forced shower. Thanks, Bill. We Champagne might. drenched, Bill. Said, Weir yeah, no. well, I'm so Lake. glad to be sitting here I'll tell you that right now. Uh, back here in Chicago, Robin Baumgarten up in Skycam 9. She's monitoring uh, some of the celebrations. Uh, Dance is over. The music is stopped. The Chicago Bulls once again NBA champs and doing so in similar fashion to last year, beating the Utah Jazz in six games. Jack, you've been around this game for a long, long time. And it seems like every year we try to come up with a different adjective to describe what we saw. Michael Jordan, fill in the blank. Unbelievable, amazing, incredible. Take your pick. Man. Yes. He was any or all of those things. And what I liked especially about Michael's game in other games where he had gone so consistently to the post, and I give Phil Jackson the credit for this strategy, Michael went to the perimeter knowing that there was no jazz individual that could stop him on his drive to the basket. Very hard to double team him from that position because he can find the open man. He repeatedly drove to the basket, either got the field goal or went to the free throw line and then at the defensive end he got a key steal from Carl Malone down the stretch that helped him get his team the victory if you didn't watch the game but just looked at the box score at Scottie Pippen's numbers you would say what was wrong with Scotty well we knew something was wrong with him and I think one word would describe his performance heroic Dan there weren't many NBA players who would play a game bearing up under the handicap that Scottie Pippen had. He could hardly run, couldn't jump, but made some key defensive plays, deflecting passes into the post, and on offense, got the ball in the post, in the lane a couple of times where he could loop home a couple of one-handers from about four feet out. So at both ends of the floor, he made a contribution, even though he was sorely hampered. I know we're supposed to be celebrating the Chicago Bulls, but I think we would be remiss in not talking about the Utah Jazz. In particular, Carl Malone, who took a lot of criticism earlier in this series, but came back in resounding fashion the last two games. Now, I thought the mailman really stepped up and delivered. And his teammates also deserve a lot of credit, Dan. They play a team game. I think Jerry Sloan does a terrific coaching job with this team. He gets everybody involved. The mailman and John Stockton are the principal players, but they get a lot of production from other guys as well. I'll ask you, I'll ask Michael, I'll ask anybody who comes in here, including Phil Jackson, 
do you think this is the last we've seen of Michael Jordan? I think so, Dan, at least with the Chicago Bulls. Now, Jerry Reinsdorf made some interesting comments after the game, but I don't think the players are of a mind that they're coming back to Chicago next year. All right. It's been a pleasure to work with you again. Thank I enjoyed you, it, Dan, as always. All right. Our coverage of the NBA Finals will continue. For Jack Ramsey, I'm Dan Patrick. Let's go back to the studio. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Meanwhile, they talked about the Utah Jazz, a courageous performance. Indeed, it was one of those stars on that team. Of course, John Stockton, a dejected Stockton, met with the media after the ball game. We'll listen into what Sean Hassan has to say. There's a whole generation of great players that are playing at the same time as Michael Jordan. Is it frustrating, I mean, coming up losing? I'm not talking about emotions. I mean, the, the whole generation, if you, if you have anything, I don't know. I'm not following your question. How does it feel, I mean, playing in, in the Jordan effect, okay? I mean, do you feel like you've been made losers because of playing at the same time as yet? No. John, can you just simply offer some appreciation of Michael, if in fact, you know, this might have been the last one, it might not, but you've played against him all these years. Just, just an appreciation of him. Well, it won't be his last one. I, I think... Uh, it's been a nice story for everybody here, but but uh, uh, he's not quitting. Uh, he'll be back, and Scotty will be back, and Phil Jackson will be back. I'm tired of hearing all that. Uh, but it worked for him, so uh, give him credit. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you. All right, so we found one person who thinks that all those guys will be back. On Phil Jackson, I think he most certainly is wrong, but I suppose only time will tell. Meanwhile, we've talked about how it happened. Let's show you how it happened. The Bulls and Jazz, game six tonight from Salt Lake City. Would it be Michael Jordan's final game? That was the question. Carl Malone trying to prolong his nemesis's career. Meanwhile, the big question was Scottie Pippen's back. It was bothering him early on. This slam dunk would prove bad for the Bulls as Scottie Pippen would hurt himself coming down and then another inside move you can see how gingerly Pippen is moving as he puts the Bulls up to but of more concern with Scottie Pippen's injury condition he'd have to take, take himself off the floor go out to the locker room get worked on on the back room while Carmelo taking over working on Bill Wennington because he had already gotten Luke Longley and Dennis Rodman into foul trouble Second quarter, Jordan knew he needed to step it up with Pippen on the bench or in the locker room. Tony Kukoc, Alley, Jordan with the oop. Michael Jordan, 15 points in the second quarter, 23 in the first half. Late in the second, Malone not to be outdone. In the second quarter, he and Michael Jordan had a thrilling game of force. 20 first half points for Malone. Scottie Pippen loosening up in the third. He would give it a go. Pippen, however, laboring just to make his way up court. You can see how gingerly he's running his back having taken a pounding over the last few playoff weeks. Things then getting testy. Michael Jordan and Brian Russell exchanging a little elbowing, a little pushing and shoving. And then the battle royale between these two wrestlers, Dennis Rodman and Carl Malone. The takedown goes to Malone, and then Dennis Rodman returning the favor. And they would continue to go at one another. Finally, when it was all done, Rodman would be called for the foul, but these two would pay each other respect throughout the series with pats on the back. Jazz leading 59-57, Scottie Pippen working inside, no good, but Dennis Rodman, who made his presence felt throughout the series, tips it up and good, and watch Scottie Pippen gingerly making his way back up court. After that basket, Pippen would leave the game again. Jazz by five after three, and the Bulls' hopes were resting in part on Scottie Pippen's back, in other part on this man. Pippen was back in the fourth quarter, setting a pick here as Michael Jordan working around Jeff Hornacek. Bulls take a 74-73 lead. Pippen played 26 minutes, 8 points and 4 assists. Jazz up by a due, shot clock winding down. A big moment. They would count this basket from Ron Harper, although replays showed it may have gotten off after the buzzer. Either way, game tied at 79. 47 seconds remaining. A big pass to John Stockton, who drills a 3. He had 10 points, none bigger than those. Jazz up 86-83. 40 seconds remaining. Michael Jordan working into the lane, lays it up and good. Jerry Sloan knows his team was up just one. The Jazz next possession. They go down to Malone as you knew they would. Everyone knew they would, including Michael Jordan, who pimps Malone. With 20 seconds remaining, Michael Jordan takes the basketball and now would try and take the basketball game and the title as well. Working on Brian Russell. Russell goes for the fake. Michael Jordan pulls up. Many of his jumpers late in the ball game had been short. This time he makes sure of the follow through. Gets nothing but the bottom of the net. Bulls up a point, 87-86. Michael had scored their last eight. Would the Jazz look to Malone? Would they look to Stockton? Where would they go for the final shot? Five seconds remaining, perhaps in their season. John Stockton would take the inbounds pass. He would receive a screen. It's up, and it is no good by that much. And as it rattles away, the Chicago Bulls had won their sixth NBA championship. 
in the last eight years. A courageous Scotty Pippen in tears as he's probably played his last game with the Bulls. Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, was this it for them? The most successful tandem, perhaps, in NBA history. 87-86, the Chicago Bulls win game six. They win the series four games to two. They repeat on the three-peat. Michael Jordan had 45 points. A very happy coach afterward, Phil Jackson, who was probably coached his last game for the Bulls, met up with our Dan Patrick for a conversation. We take you there now. In the series, I ask you if this was the last dance. Can you dance? After winning the title, do you feel like dancing? Well, you just got me back from doing a jig i was doing just a <laughs> slight jig and then i went to the soft shoe and now i'm ready to tangle with you here we go you were asked on the podium by the media describe michael's performance you've been around him you've had the best view of anybody right. and i was i guess i was a little surprised at what you said that this was as good as it ever got with watching michael how can it be any better i can't imagine a guy coming through with better clutch situations he couldn't shoot the ball at the end he was very tired Still at the end, he decided to pull up and shoot that jumper. He had confidence in himself, and that's what he's all about. He's got great confidence in his ability. Scotty Pippen, as Jack Ramsey and I talked about, if you look at his numbers, you would say, what happened to Scotty? Subpar performance. But just the fact that he was able to play, I mean, did you expect to get anything out of him in the second half? After we went in and uh, we gave him a rest, we're up by, I don't know, nine points or something. We said, this is a good time to rest him, get some electric stim on him, maybe numb that pain a little bit in his back, get him back there so he can function. His legs were going dead on him. He went in the locker room, he couldn't return. Second half, he said, let me try it, let me start the half out. We, we gave him eight minutes there. He went in and got some more stim and came back and finished the game. And those 26 points, believe it or not, no matter what you look at those stats, were very important for us because of what our defense could do at the end of the game. Do you get emotional with this, or when do you get reflective with something like this and, and truly appreciate what you've been able to accomplish and witness? Probably by July 15th on the Flathead Lake in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a wonderful run for you. Do you, do you look back and say, I, I can't let this go away. I, I, this feeling I have, I never, ever want to let it go. I want to defend it. You know, that's the great thing about it, but how many times can you keep doing it? I, I said you know, in, the, in the press conference there with the writers, how many times does Michael have to prove this to the world that he's the best clutch player that's ever played in this game of basketball? I don't know anybody that's fulfilled the drama or the story better than this guy. Phil, it's been wonderful. I hope the dance hasn't stopped. I hope it continues. We'll throw another quarter in the jukebox for you. Let's go back to the studio. Dan, thank you. We take a well, I, I feel like that it, it needs to be at least more than, than one season. I mean, I have to look more for my future. Well, I mean, don't throw the locker room, Krista. Scotty's leaving. <laughs> Scotty, you know, obviously you and Michael have got to be together, though, right? Well, I would love to say yes, and, you know, I would love for that Can you that imagine playing in the league without Michael? It's all your career. You and Michael have been the team. No, I mean, as many teams he's disappointed. I don't I don't want to be on the disappointing side, but, you know, I've enjoyed my career with Michael, and I feel like that, you know, I perform much better mm -hmm. being on the court with him. Well, you know, he feels the same way about you. I mean, if you don't have Michael and Michael doesn't have you, I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's the same uh, basketball world anymore. Well, I, I hope that, you know, me and Michael can stick together at least for a few more years, and that's all I can do. Scotty, how do you Monte Crisco, Scotty? Actually, I got this one. Okay, Scotty Pippen, it is hard to imagine uh, Michael and Scotty, uh, one without the other. No They're, question They have about a real symbiotic relationship. They complement right? each other so well, and on the court, and off the court, too. They're great uh, friends off the court in a, in a basketball sense. And I think uh, they'd be hard pressed to play uh, without each, each, one, of the, one of the other. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, but the, as, as David Falk mentioned, the entire team—they need more depth too off the bench. So, Michael, mm -hmm. all these guys are going to take a step back or two and say, "Wait, we need some help in here too off the bench." So, it's it's a long shot. I still think it's a long shot, but uh, we'll see what happens. You got to mm -hmm. just. Uh, and Jerry Reinsdorf, by the way, has said he'd like everybody back if he can work it out. All the stuff about him not wanting wanting to force people out. He has said recently, in fact, he told me last summer he wanted to be back if it would well work out. And Pippen's a big key. He's a free agent. If Pippen wants to go to Phoenix or somewhere else and ask for big money and the Bulls don't want to pay that, then it's tough. So we have, I understand we have Jerry Reinsdorf being interviewed. So let's see if we have any insight from the commander-in-chief of the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> It's only unfortunate that we can't have co-champions because this Utah Jazz team is just the greatest team that we've ever played. Two years in a row, they took us as far as you could, ta you could take anybody. Winning six, in a r six championships in eight years is unbelievable. It's a tribute to a great coach and his staff 
Great players, Scotty and Michael, an unbelievable performance by Scotty and Payne tonight. Jerry Krause and his staff, just unbelievable. And on behalf of millions of Bulls fans all over the world, I can only hope and pray that Michael and Scotty will come back and defend the championship one more time. I take that as a yes. So, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf wants him back uh, one more time if you can get him back. And we'll Rich, see. hasn't he said that he would run this team at a deficit? Uh, at, or at least at a, on a break-even basis I am to told, keep this team together? I, no, I am told financially there's no problem with money. Uh, and it, it can be done. The problem is that they get all these guys back, they have no money left to get anybody else. Mm -hmm. Any free agents or anything. That and that's kinda, the fault with saying they need to bring they, somebody they want some else depth. But I think they can do it. I would, you know, to me, there's no chance to rebuild now. Scotty Pippen, you no. can't trade him anymore. So why not just stick together one or two more years, see what happens? And nobody would object to that. And but I, Down the stretch, they capitalized on uh, everything we did, and uh, they made the plays. And you can't, you can't, uh, you can't talk about anything else. In the Super Bowl, when the team loses the Super Bowl, all of a sudden they're the worst team in the league, or they're they're viewed as losers. Do you think America views the Utah Jazz and says? They're losers. They can't win the big one. Absolutely not. I don't think so. I think all of all of America. Uh, they have a lot of respect for Chicago, but I think all of America would would have loved to see us win. I, I really feel that in my heart. Kind of like the Denver Broncos syndrome. Uh, I don't. I don't think we. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think we have that that tag as losers. Uh, uh, we come out. We play hard. We don't have any excuses. Uh, when we suit up, we come out ready to play. Uh, but it's a way that you win and a way you lose. And you got to lose with class and dignity. dignity and you got to get the other teams uh, credit for that. And uh, that's part of it. You've been banging heads with Michael Jordan ever since you got in the league. Uh, greater appreciation? Is that possible to have more appreciation for him when you see him on stage like this take home a title? Well, I think the thing about it is... Uh, you know, he realized what he had to do. You know, he knew Scotty was hurt, and other guys probably weren't finding their shot. And he stepped up and did the things down the stretch to help them win. I have a lot of respect for Michael. I have nothing but positive thing to say about him. He uh, he's not caught up in all the side shows. He's a throwback to the the older guys that played this game. And he play, and really and truly, he don't do a lot of talking unless you say something to him. And I respect that. I respect that in, in people. It's not like a lot of players who talk a lot and when it's time to play, they don't play. He just plays the game. And I like that in Michael, and I respect him a lot. And like I said, I you know, I, I don't know if people want me to say something negative, but I really have nothing negative to say about Michael. He played hard. He go out to try to win and try to get his teammates to win, and that's part of it. You're supposed to take something positive away from this. Last year they said, well, what did you take away from losing in the finals? I'll ask you again, what do you take away from losing in the finals? That's losing in the finals sucks. That's what I take away for this summer. Uh, uh, do I look forward to, to suiting it up doing it again? Absolutely. Do I like losing? Nope. So I'm not going to go out as a loser and I'll see what happens, but I want to give a lot of respect to Chicago and their organization and, and Scotty and Michael and Dennis and all those guys and uh, my guys over here. I think we played hard. I think if you would have talked to anybody early on in this season, I don't think anybody would put their money on the jazz that we would have been in the finals. You know, we played hard, but you got to tip your hat to Chicago. They won. They came in here. They beat us twice on our floor. You got to give them credit for that. In victory and in defeat, you've been a stand-up guy. It's been a pleasure covering you, Carl. Thank you very much. You know what? Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks. Let's go back to the studio. So for the second straight year, the jazz come two games... Chicago. We're going for number seven. I'm going to go all the way to the year 2000. Well, I'll, I'll ask you a question about that. Harper said that this was a team effort, but the fact of the matter is, and, and not to take away from any of the no. other guys, this was a Michael Jordan. It was. Uh, Robin, I mentioned the other key factor. He did play well in the second half. He didn't have a good first half, played well in the second half. It was mostly Michael, though. Scotty was a decoy. Nobody else came. Uh, Kerr didn't come up. Nobody came up big in this game. Harper played a little defense at the end. That was about it, but uh, it was Michael all the way. You couldn't ask for more. The script is this. A, the guy, they're down by three. He makes a shot to get him down by one. He steals the ball and then he wins the game. You couldn't ask for anything better. Storybook ending. The yeah. big rally is going to be uh, Tuesday in Grant Park at 10 a.m. Just want to remind everybody, I hope they do something a little bit different. This of course, time. we'll be covering it. No, I don't think they will. We'll be covering it live. We'll and, uh, everybody will have a great time, I'm sure. 10 a.m. Bill Weir has who? Who's Bill Weir with? Bill?
Steve Kerr. Right. Hey, right. Steve. The big Steve Kerr. Cheers in the studio for you, as well as out all here. All right, all right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. You look uh, equal parts exhausted and elated. Uh, is that the That's apt description? Best way to describe it. I don't know if people realize that we've played over 100 games a year for three years in a row. And we're tired. We, we are so happy this is over. If you were a horse, you'd either be put down or let out the shot, pasture. Shot I'd right be now. shot, yeah. <laughs> Luke was saying this is the sweetest because it's the most hard fought. You agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. It was the most difficult and the most improbable. Yeah. And I think it was the most fitting because, let, let's face it, without Michael, we don't win any of these championships. And this was his game. And what better way for him to maybe finish his career or, or to win his last title or whatever uh, but he completely dominated the game, and, and it was fitting. He deserves it. I got to tell you, when uh, when a defender went down in front of him, it was reminiscent of your shot last year. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, recording this for posterity, uh, his defender went down reminiscent of your shot last year. Is he taking lessons from you now? Is that what happened? Come on, come on, <laughs> come on. I mean, I, I'm just happy to be here. I was on his coattails all night. I've been on his coattails for five years. I'm so happy that uh, basically that he's on my side. <laughs> Even though everybody's dancing in the streets back home, we're still thinking about next year. Any thoughts on I don't what's going on? I don't care about next year. I'm going to just enjoy this. And, I mean, who cares? I mean, this is so sweet. And, and if it's the end, it's the end. I mean, I'm just thankful that the, the Bulls management brought me in in the first place five years ago. I'm thankful to have been a part of all this. If this was my last Bulls game, that's all right. Couldn't I, be I it couldn't be better. Congratulations, man. Let's send it back to Stephen Allison. Always a, a long-range uh, threat, Steve Kerr. Delightful guy, too. He's always uh, available mm -hmm. to the media, and he summed it up pretty well. you got to enjoy the moment. The Zen philosophy, right? You bet. <laughs> you know, you said Scotty was a decoy. He really was, because the announcer said that, you know, Scotty went into the locker room uh, at some point in the game, the first quarter, and... Right. and uh, they said he wouldn't be back. They yeah. said he was injured. He was out of the well, game. His presence on the floor is enough to uh, gather some attention. And even if he can't play well, he's holding the ball, dishing the ball off, threw some attention. That's why he was in there. We still want to know what's going on on the streets of Chicago. So for that, we'll check back in with Jackie Bang, who's out in the middle of all the action tonight. Jackie. Hi, you guys. I'm uh, kind of mellowed, just like the crowd. Look beyond me. It has died down considerably in the last 40 minutes, I would say. I guess uh, people have just kind of came out and enjoyed all the celebration, and then after about a half an hour, they realized... The new ESPN, the magazine.